very well. I won't say who knows us very well, but we're on that side of the room. Um, uh, Bill and I have, uh, I usually hand out a biography sheet when I'm here, but I, I you know, ever, after a while it's just the same old, same old at this point because we're, we're actually giving back to the community for all the years of our training and learning experience. Um, just briefly, Bill is retired from East Makodak. His second uh, career was uh, Orange Oyster Bosies. Uh, and, and along with that, he was my partner in Wyand Wellness, uh, a holistic health service that we had for over 30 years. Um, I started out in telecommunications, uh, went on to a uh, main person in Wyand Wellness, um, and uh, then I'm now a wedding officiant. So if you know if anybody wants to get married, I can help you out with that too. But over this illustrious career of ours, um, we have had the opportunity, great opportunity, to learn a lot of different things. And in the holistic health field, there are a lot of things that you can talk about that are helpful for people, things that they might not know. Uh, in the same token, when I'm sharing my information, I get shared back from you folks because I don't know everything that's out there. Um, so we, we, try to, we like to do these little talks. We used to give formal presentations all over the place. Um, our last big gig was Mount St. Mary's College Desmond campus until it closed down with COVID. Uh, we were invited to come back, but we sort of got nice and comfortable with our retirement and we kind of just figured, ah, we'll just, we just, that's where we know these ladies from, is from the Desmond campus, amongst other things. Uh, so we, it, right now, we just love to share information, and when somebody comes and asks us, if, do we know anything about this subject matter, if we can handle it, we'll, we'll handle it. So these are just little fireside chats. I wish the fireplace was going on a day like today. But today is just a talk on seasonal affective disorder. Uh, how many people know what seasonal affective disorder is? Uh, I, most everybody knows what it is. I started with um, this particular program uh, with the uh, nurses at when Horton was Horton Hospital and we were starting to get a holistic um, group down in Horton Hospital at the time but the nurses were very receptive to everything and uh, what uh, she what they had us doing me as in specific was working with um, irritable bowel syndrome patients and people with seasonal affective disorder and um, it's funny because I was just reviewing some information to share with you today and I learned a little something new myself which will be interesting to see if anybody else knows about that um, but basically we're just going to chat and if you guys have anything to share by all means raise your hand and, and give it out because that's what this is about is sharing the information now most of us know that seasonal this affective disorder is a type of depression that's related to changes in seasons and SAD begins and ends at about the same time every year. And if you're like most people with SAD, your symptoms start in the fall and continue into the winter months. Right? Everybody knows that's the norm. Okay, and it saps your energy and it makes you feel moody. And these symptoms often resolve during the spring and summer months. Less often, SAD causes depression in the spring and early summer and resolves during the fall of winter months. I never knew that. I never dealt with anybody who had seasonal affective disorder in spring and summer. All the people I knew about was fall and winter. But so that's something that I learned. So what the, what we're saying is, is treatment for SAD may include light therapy or phototherapy, psychotherapy and medications. So what we're saying to you is don't brush off these yearly feelings is simply a case of the winter blues or a seasonal funk that you have to get through uh, and on your own because uh, there are ways to take steps to keep your mood and motivation steady throughout the year to help you overcome this time of year on a dreary day like today when there's no sun and can't do anything blah 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 there we go now most of the symptoms in most cases seasonal affective disorder symptoms appear during late fall or early winter and go away during the sunny days of spring and summer less commonly people with the opposite pattern have symptoms that begin in spring or summer in either case symptoms may start out mild and become more severe as the season progresses what do you guys know about seasonal affective disorder what what do you know about 
the symptoms of seasonal. So feeling sad, really. Mm -hmm. Feeling and sad? Yeah, the shortened daylight hours, definitely. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Lack of I know certain illnesses yeah. will flare up in the spring and the fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. My yeah. husband had gout, and but he always would have an attack in the spring and in the fall. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Lack of motivation. Mm hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Also, the fact that socialization kind of is limited due to the weather. You can't go out and <coughs> see your friends or do things. Right. Correct. Yep. That's true. Uh, I'll just run down the list that I have here. It's, uh, it's feeling listless, sad, or down most of the day, nearly every day, losing interest in activities you once enjoyed, having low energy and feeling sluggish, having problems with sleeping too much, experiencing carbohydrate cravings, overeating, and weight gain. Oh boy, don't we all know about those. <laughs> having difficulty concentrating, feeling hopeless, worthless, or guilty, having thoughts of not wanting to live, Sound about right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, symptoms, there are specific symptoms to the fall and winter SAD, and those symptoms are oversleeping, appetite changes, especially a craving for foods high in carbohydrates, weight gain, tiredness, or low energy. The spring and summer version symptoms are trouble sleeping, insomnia, poor appetite, weight loss, agitation, or anxiety, increased irritability. Now, your seasonal changes in bipolar disorder, this is a, another little thing that you have to be aware of. People who have bipolar disorder are at increased risk of seasonal affective disorder. In some people with bipolar disorder, episodes of mania may be linked to a specific season. For example, spring and summer can bring on symptoms of mania or a less intense form of mania, hypomania, oh, wonderful, anxiety, agitation, and irritability. They may also experience depression during the fall and winter months. And they tell you, you know, when to go see a doctor. Well, it, it's always good if you have tried several different things and it's not helping very much, then of, of course you always want to go and get checked out by the doctor because there could be something else going on. We, we'll run across a couple of those things. Now, the causes. Does anybody know what the causes of, of seasonal affective disorder? Are actually they it remains unknown some factors that may come into play include your biological clock or your <coughs> circadian rhythm with the reduced level of sunlight in fall and winter that could that could cause winter onset sad this d decrease in sunlight may disrupt your body's internal clock and lead to feelings of depression the next factor is the serotonin levels you know have you ever heard of serotonin serotonin mm -hmm. okay a drop in serotonin, which is a brain chemical or a neurotransmitter that affects mood, might play a role in SAD. Reduced sunlight can cause a drop in serotonin that may trigger depression. Have you heard of melatonin? Mm -hmm. Okay, Melatonin, the change in season, can disrupt the balance of the body's level of melatonin, which plays a role in sleep patterns and mood. And we're going to go into that a little bit further for you. Now, the risk factors, seasonal affective disorder is diagnosed more often in women than in men. You're safe, dear. Mm -hmm. And SAD <laughs> occurs more frequently in younger adults than in older adults. I thought it was the other way around. I mm -hmm. thought the older folks would be more susceptible so. to it, but no. Th and this is, this is Mayo Clinic, and I bow very well with what Mayo Clinic has to say, so I'm always checking with them when it comes to things. But there are other factors that might come into play, and that could be family history. People with SAD may be more likely to have blood relatives with SAD or another form of depression. Having major depression or bipolar disorder, symptoms of depression may worsen seasonally if you have one of these conditions. Living far from the equator. SAD appears to be more common among people who live far north or south of the equator. This may be due to decreased sunlight during the winter and longer days during the summer months. Low level of vitamin D. Some vitamin D is produced in the skin when it's exposed to sunlight. Vitamin D can help to boost serotonin activity. Less sunlight and not getting enough vitamin D from foods and other sources may result in low levels of vitamin D in the body. We'll talk a little more about that too. Now, some of the complications that uh, the Mayo Clinic uh, talks about is the 
Take signs and symptoms of seasonal affective disorder seriously, as with other types of depression, SAD can get worse and lead to problems if it's not treated. This can include social withdrawal, school or work problems, substance abuse, which we already have an issue with with other things, so other mental health disorders such as anxiety or eating disorders and suicidal thoughts or behavior. So there's quite a few little nasty things in there that could really get in there when you're suffering from uh, SAD. Now, prevention is there's no known way to prevent the development of seasonal, seasonal affective disorder. However, if you take steps early on to manage symptoms, you may be able to prevent them from getting worse over time. You may be able to head off serious changes in mood, appetite, and energy levels as you can predict the time of the year in which these symptoms may start. Treatment can help prevent complications, especially if SAD is diagnosed and treated before symptoms get bad. Some people find it helpful to begin treatment before sy symptoms would normally start in the fall or winter and then continue treatment past the time symptoms would normally go away. Other people need continuous treatment to prevent symptoms from returning. Okay, so that's your basic overall, overall look at what seasonal affective disorder is. Anybody have any questions about we, what we just covered? That all sounds pretty much what you were familiar with before. So let's just cover a little couple of these <clears throat> items a little more closely. And serotonin, uh, this is a, and I'm not going to try to pronounce these terms that they have in here. We just know it's a, it's a neurotransmitter and it acts like a hormone, okay, in your body. And the serotonin carries messages between nerve cells in your brain, your central nervous system, and throughout your body. And these chem chemical mes messages tell your body how to work. So serotonin plays several roles in your body, including influencing learning, memory, happiness, as well as regulating body temperatures, sleep, sexual behavior, and hunger. Lack of enough serotonin is thought to play a role in depression, anxiety, anxiety, mania, and other health conditions. Most of the serotonin found in your body is in your gut or your intestines. About 90% of serotonin is found in the cells lining your gastrointestinal tract. It's released into your blood circulation and absorbed by the platelets. Only about 10% is produced in your brain. Now, it goes on and it, it tells us it's, a, it's an essential amino acid. You don't need to know the name of it. You're not going to remember how to pronounce it anyway because I don't. I just know it's something in the body that you need to help you with overcoming the effects of seasonal affective disorder. Now, serotonin plays a role in many of your body function, functions, and the first one they mention is mood. We all talk about how we get moody when we get into this seasonal time. And serotonin in your brain regulates your mood. It's often called your body's natural feel-good chemical. When serotonin is at normal levels, you'll feel more focused, emotionally stable, happier, and calmer. Low levels of serotonin are associated with depression. Many medications used to treat anxiety, depression, and other mood disorders often target ways to increase the level of serotonin in your brain. It also has a big thing to do with your digestion. And most of your body's serotonin is in your GI tract where it helps control your bowel function and plays a role in protecting your gut. Your gut can increase serotonin release to speed digestion to rid your body of irritating foods or toxic products. Serotonin also plays a part in reducing your appetite while eating. That's another thing we just talked about. It. You, don't, you, you eat the wrong kinds of foods. You don't, your digestion isn't the way it's supposed to be. Your body gets all out of whack. That's, that's not good. Now, it has, uh, has a little something to do with nausea. Nausea is triggered when serotonin is, is released into your gut faster than it can be digested. The chemical message is received by your brain, which you perceive as nausea. Many drugs used to release, fe reduce feelings of nausea and vomiting target specific serotonin receptors in your brain. Sleep is another thing that serotonin is very important to, to you for. Serotonin, together with another neurotransmitter, uh, dopamine plays a role in the quality of your sleep, how well and how long you sleep. Your brain also needs serotonin to make melatonin, a hormone that regulates your sleep-wake cycle. So they, they work in conjunction with each other. Serotonin is also um, helpful in wound healing. 
It's released by platelets in your blood to help heal wounds. It also causes the tiniest blood vessels, arterioles, to narrow, which slows blood flow and helps clots to form. This is an important process in wound healing. Serotonin is also vital in your bone health. You'll see the connection with vitamin D and serotonin. And hello, hello. Sandy is here. <laughs> All right, so bone health, serotonin levels may play a role in the density of your bones. High levels of serotonin in your gut may play a role in making bones weak, which can lead to bone breaks, fractures, and osteoporosis. And then serotonin is also vital for your sexual health. It plays a role together with the neurotransmitter dopamine in your desire for sex. Oh God, we have to make sure we preserve that, right? <laughs> okay, so now what problems are associated with low serotonin levels? Your low, uh, low levels, of course, are gonna affect your depression and other mood problems, okay? Anxiety, sleep problems, digestive problems, suicidal behavior, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, panic disorders, schizophrenia, and phobias. And uh, scientists are still working on learning more about the role of serotonin in the body and in diseases. But so far, that's a pretty, pretty good list to deal with. Okay. And um, they just give you some uh, things on what can cause low serotonin levels. Uh, to have a low level technically means that your body isn't producing enough serotonin your, or your body isn't effectively using serotonin. And uh, then they give you ways of to increase your serotonin levels, um, eating more. <laughs> Tryptophan containing foods. I should have looked that word up so I could explain that to you. Does anybody know what that means? Try? Tryptophan. Oh, is that the yeah. stuff in Turkey? Yeah, that does that sound good. Getting more sunlight taking certain supplements and getting more exercise and lowering your stress level. There are foods to increase your serotonin levels. Um, oh, it's an amino acid. Ah, okay, that's what that word means. It's an amino acid. Now, see, even I learned something new every day. I probably knew that somewhere along the line. I just forgot about it. But salmon, eggs, cheese, turkey, tofu, pineapples, nuts, oats, and seeds. And eating foods high in, in, in that amino acid will uh, not necessarily boost your serotonin levels on its own, but it, co it, it it's a complex process. So your body will take what it gets and do what it has to do with it based on what it does. And of course, my, my big fun thing is sunlight. You gotta get enough sunlight. And that's the biggest crux with seasonal affective disorder is the low level of sunlight and how important that is. And um, and what, they're, what they say is try to get 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight each day um, to boost not only your serotonin levels, but vitamin D levels too. And in, if you live in an area where you can't get natural sunlight, consider using light therapy to get the needed daily sunlight, which we will talk about. There was, a, I have, a, and it was funny because a nurse friend of mine who I, have lunch with every couple of weeks um, we were talking about seasonal effective or vitamin D levels and um, she said um, not that I didn't know this already but I wasn't going to stop her you know I have to but she said you know that she read a study a while ago was part of the training for a nurse nurses program that she was in and um, they did a study about people who live in New York State or the northern part of the country like us we live so far away from the equator that mm -hmm. we naturally don't get the same level of sunlight even in the summertime, okay? So your people who live further away north and further away south are gonna have vitamin D deficiencies more often than people who live closer to the equator. The other issue is, is people who live closer to the equator, you would think would be in the optimum place to be unfortunately have a higher incidence of cancers. So what years ago, what did the doctor usually prescribe for you guys who all showed up and with winter blues? What did they prescribe to you? Go south for two weeks. It'll take care of everything. Go to Florida. Isn't that what they used to tell you? That's what we got told years ago. They would send you south. 
Go down for two weeks, you'll be all revived and refreshed. You come back north, you're feeling like a million bucks. That's what they used to tell you. That's because sunlight plays a very, very important <coughs> vital role in your health and keeping seasonal affective disorder under wraps. And of course, there's always the exercise, supplements. We'll, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, here's this little bugaboo called melatonin. Um, melatonin is a hormone in your body that plays a role in sleep. Hibernation. What is it the feeling that we get every time the fall starts in? All we want to do is play like the bears and go into the cave and hibernate. It's because your melatonin levels are increasing. Serotonin is affected by daylight. Melatonin is affected by nighttime, darkness. As it gets darker, your body creates more melatonin. So that's why when the days get shorter and the nights start creeping in earlier, you're starting to go to sleep a lot earlier. You know, what set was seven o'clock for me in the winter time, in the summertime, five o'clock in the winter time isn't soon enough for me to go snoozing in my warm bed. <laughs> because the melatonin level, and as, you're, as you sleep during the night, your melatonin levels are the highest just before you have to get up, just before sunrise. So you're so loaded with melatonin, you don't want to go anyplace. You don't want to get up. Okay? Now, the, the melatonin is available as a supplement. You, I'm sure you've heard them talk about using melatonin if you can't sleep. Okay? It, it, it's fine. It, it works, I guess. But you have to be very careful with it. Uh, a lot of reports that we ran into when we dealt with people with taking melatonin is that you end up with lucid dreams and nightmares. That's something you have to consider. So please, you know, check it out. Talk to a lot of people about using melatonin if, you, if you're thinking of doing it. But it's, it's um, research on melatonin can, can help spe specific conditions. And uh, circadia rhythm sleep d disorders in the blind. It's very interesting. How do blind people know when it's dark and when it's light? Just think, just think about that. But blind people have a problem with their circadia rhythm because they don't, want, don't know when it's dark and they don't know when it's light, okay? Delayed sleep phase. Delayed sleep phase is a disorder, and that's your, when your sleep pattern is delayed two hours or more from a conventional sleep pattern, pattern causing you to go to sleep later and wake up later. And melatonin uh, reduces the length of time that you need to fall asleep and advances the start of sleep in adults, so melatonin can help that. Your shift workers are your biggest people who might be looking at melatonin because they have to get, be up when they're supposed to be asleep and asleep when they're supposed to be. So anyway, insomnia is another thing that you have to, to, to worry about. Melatonin um, ha, ha, has an effect on your sleep quality. Um, jet lag is another thing that uh, melatonin can improve is your jet lag. We were laughing, Bill asked me the other morning, he says, if we get up at six o'clock in the morning here in New York and we fly to California, what time is it out in California? Six o'clock. So you started out your day at six o'clock and fly into California and all of a sudden it's six o'clock again? Woo! What's that gonna do to your biological rhythms? <laughs> Crazy when you think about it. Um, okay, it's generally safe. Your body likely produces enough melatonin for its general needs. However, evidence suggests um, that melatonin supplements promote sleep and are safe for short-term use. So just like I said, be careful because it also causes some headaches, some dizziness, nausea, and drowsiness. Just just be careful if you're going to play with it. I mean, you can go to the drugstore and get melatonin up the yin yang, but you know you want to be careful with it. Okay. Um, there are certain um, interactions with uh, melatonin, so if you're on, uh, please check if you're on um, anticoagulants or anticonvulsants or blood pressure drugs or central nervous. Depre uh, depressants, diabetes medication, contraceptive drugs, things of that nature, you should check with your doctor before you take uh, melatonin. Okay. Okay, so that's the two major... Now, we're going to talk a little bit about vitamin D. That's the other uh, factor in seasonal affective <coughs> disorder. Vitamin D is an essential vitamin 
that helps to regulate calcium and phosphorus in the body. <coughs> it's also a nutrient your body needs for building and maintaining healthy bones. That's because your body can only absorb calcium, the primary component of bone, when vitamin D is present. That's the thing when you're taking a bunch of vitamins and whatnot, you really have to pay attention to what you're taking and when you're taking it. And the most, a lot of your vitamins will tell you, preferably take it with a meal. Why do you think that is? Meals absorb better. Well, let's put it this way. Uh, a specific vitamin might need about five other vitamins along with it in order to make it as effective as mm -hmm. it should be. So that's, that's the basis behind that. And you have to, it takes a little bit of time to learn what you should be taking, how you should be taking it, when you should be taking it, okay? Um, there are different forms of vitamin D, um, D2, D3, I think we've heard a bunch of the numbers. It isn't naturally found in many foods, but you get it from fortified milk, fortified cereal, and fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, and sardines. And this is my big thing with sunlight, is your body also makes vitamin T D when direct sunlight converts a chemical in your skin into an active form of the vitamin calciferol. Your skin is the largest organ in your body. During periods of sunlight, vitamin D is stored in fat and then released when sunlight is not available. So what happens in the summertime when it's all sight and sunny and bright and whatnot, you're going outside and you're doing things. What's, what's going on there? Tank tops, shorts, no shoes, socks, flip flops maybe, no hats, no coats, right? What happens when the fall and the winter comes? What happens? Boots, socks, pants, layers, sleeves down to here, scarves, hats, necks, and what's the last thing you do? You put the sunglasses on. Well, there's two ways you get vitamin D. Skin and the iris of your eye. So what do you do in the wintertime? You cover up every receptor your poor body has to take on vitamin D. So what's gonna happen? There's nothing going to be inside to do the work because it's all out here still. It hasn't been taken in by your skin. Okay, so people who don't get enough sun and people who are 65 years or older are at risk for vitamin D deficiency. It's important to maintain a healthy level of vitamin D. Does anybody know what a symptom is of low vitamin D? Osteoporosis maybe? There aren't any. Okay. You wouldn't know if you had a low level of vitamin D. The only way you can find out is if you go have a blood test specifically. To... I didn't know I had low vitamin D until I went for, to my healthy wellness. That, you know, when you get old like me, you're supposed to go and see the doctor every once in a while and you get tested. And did a blood test and I had like 13% vitamin D and I think you need about minimum of 30 or something like that. I don't know what it is. So she told me immediately take a supplement for vitamin D, 10,000 international units. Do you want, she wanted to put me on the heavy duty stuff prescription, like 20,000 international units. He went and got tested in routine testing. He had nothing. He was down to nothing. The doctor just looked at him and said, well, so he got put on the heavy duty stuff. Yeah. It, and, and there's no, there's no symptoms. There's no nothing. Know. And you don't know. And uh, the doctor laughed, laughed because it's just, you don't, you don't know until you get a blood test. Yep. And it is very crucial that you have the proper levels of vitamins, uh, vitamin, vitamin D. D. Yep. So if, if you're in, and so the, the crooks of this is, is you're now knowledgeable, you live in New York, you know you're not getting the sun levels that you need, so what's the easiest thing to do? Just go get a little blood test, see if the levels of D are down or whatever, and then you take whatever to bring them up. It, it's not it's not too difficult but it's a vital part of the process and the um, vitamin D in your skin it depends on many factors including the time of day season latitude and your skin pigmentation depending on where you live in your lifestyle vitamin T D production might decrease to be completely absent during the winter months sunscreen is another thing that even though it's important to prevent skin cancer can also decrease decrease your vitamin D production and remember that vitamin D can help boost serotonin activity, so get out into the sunlight. 
Where is it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the thing that I like the most about this subject matter is the sunlight. And one of the, th the thing, and this is, I got into this years ago. I don't know if anybody has heard about Dr. John Nash Ott and Ott lights, Ott lamps. Yeah. Anybody yeah. familiar with them? Okay, so we're going to just cover, uh, Dr. Ott started everything in about 1989. And, and I'll try to make it short as I can. Um, he was a banker by trade. Um, believe it or not, but he he did a lot of flower growing of flowers, and he was interested in light and uh, the effects on things and 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 whatever. But he is known as the father of full spectrum lighting. And his uh, research concluded that a light with the entire visible spectrum of light wavelengths are best for vision and well-being. This led to the development of the first sunlight lamp. And and have you ever seen those Disney movies where the beautiful flowers opening and dancing and growing with seed from seed to full blossom? Cinderella's carriage came from the process of watching that bloom, the pumpkin or whatever the flat, whatever it was. Well, he developed this technique because he was asked by Disney Studios to to work on with with the animators on this kind of thing. Um, and, I, and it's easier for me to read it to you than to try to explain it in my own words. But have you ever seen those dizzy movies with all the beautiful flowers opening and dancing, growing them seed to full bloom before your eyes? Then you've seen the work of Dr. John Nash Ott. Dr. Ott is known as the father of time-lapse photography. In fact, he was asked by the Walt Disney Company to film the entire growth of a pumpkin for Disney animators to draw the transformation of Cinderella's pumpkin into a carriage. Filming had to take place indoors to protect the extensive camera uh, equipment. At first, the plant would grow and then die. Dr. Ott tried several things, but nothing would work. Then he changed the lighting. What he found was that under some lighting conditions, only male pumpkin flowers grew, but no females. The lights were adjusted and then only females were produced, but no males. After several experiments, Dr. Ott was able to provide the proper range of light wavelengths and the pumpkin grew. Not only did he help Cinderella arrive at the ball, but this remarkable work sparked his imagination, leading him to explore the benefits of natural daylight and how it can help people see and feel better. Okay, so just some fun facts about Dr. Ott. Um, he's well, known as a father of full spectrum light. He developed the first sunlight lamp uh, he lived to be 90 years old, and he retired from banking in 1948 to pursue lifetime uh, time-lapse photography full-time. Rumor has it that in the 1970s, Dr. O uh, Ott told Cincinnati Red S Scout Rex Bowen that the green underside of a visor in most baseball caps could hamper players' performance. He recommended a switch to gray, the same year the Reds went on to win the National League pennant. So this is one of his things was the colors, okay? He has some published books. I don't have any of his books, but um, he has uh, exploring the spectrum. I don't think I don't know if the library has any of these books around, but I mean I can leave you with these titles, and if you have them or you can get them, um, uh, the health, health and light, the effects of natural daylight and artificial light on man and other living things. Health and Light, the extraordinary study that shows how light affects your health and emotional well-being, uh, light radiation in you and how to stay healthy, and then of course his story about his uh, time-lapse photography. So he was really the brainchild of light, sunlight and the full spectrum and how important it is for health and wellness. Does anybody remember the movie Pleasantville? It was a black and white movie, mm -hmm. right? So imagine the whole world in black and white color or picture the main plot of the movie Pleasantville if you have seen this flick. Just a mental image of a stark world devoid of colors is enough to reveal the importance of colors in our lives. Whether you are feeling blue after a hard day of work or going green with envy after seeing your neighbor's fancy TV, the colors have become a language through which we express ourselves. 
It's no wonder that the rainbow is often perceived as one of the most beautiful aspects of nature. Colors form when light falls on different objects and reflects as well as scatters different wavelengths. And the scattered wavelengths are what we see as colors. Anybody who's been in my color class, color therapy, I did some something last year. Um, we started getting into this, and this it just keeps popping up every time we talk about things. Your spectral colors are generally produced by monochromatic light, invisible light of a single wavelength. The spectrum appears continuous, therefore there are no definite boundaries between the colors. However, the approximate ranges of wavelength and frequency can be used to specify the differences. The most prominently appear ones are violet, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. In reality, there are seven colors in the color spectrum with the addition of indigo between blue and violet. How many people know about the chakras in the body, up the spine, right? What colors are associated with them? The colors of the rainbow, full spectrum, okay? Everything is affected by the wavelengths and the colors, and it's it all comes together. And this was, in, this was Sir Isaac Newton, uh, Newton concluded after he successfully carried out experiments to disseminate a beam of monochromatic light by projecting it into a glass prism at a specific angle to display the central spectral colors. However, the frequency of the indigo color cannot be distinguished and recognized significantly by normal human eye, leaving the exception of some well-sighted people. Hence, it was suggested that indigo be dropped from the spectral chart and should be considered a shade of blue or violet. And we always say when you're getting here, you're getting into your third eye, which is the indigo color that's between the um, chakra turquoise and your violet, which is your crown chakra here into white. And from his exper uh, experiments, uh, Newton observed that when a beam of monochromatic light falls on a prism, part of the light gets reflected, whereas some part of it passes through the prism and a band of spectral colors emerges from it. From this, Newton speculated that light was made up of the particles of different colors and that these particles move with different speeds in different media, their speed depending on the density of the medium. Red light was found to move faster than violet light and glass medium. The visible spectrum or color spectrum is a subset of the electromagnetic spectrum, and not to get into this any further. You have your rainbow colors, and then you have your infrared and your ultraviolet, okay? And I said, I said to Bill one day, I said, well, if we sat in front of an hot light box and we're getting our sun, why don't we get a sunburn? Nobody? No okay. ultraviolet rays? Exactly. What causes your, the sunburn <coughs> is your ultraviolet or uh, oh, um, infrared. infrared. That's the spectrum past what we can see, but that's what does the damage when you're sitting out in the sun. But in an ot light or a full spectrum light bulb, you're only sitting within those that color range that we said from red, red to violet. And therefore, it's not gonna be damaging, it's gonna be helpful, okay? So now each color has a frequency and a wavelength. I can give them to you if you want afterwards. Just know that red has its own frequency, orange has its own frequency, and each one of these frequencies resonates with organs and parts of the body, okay? And if everybody is happy and they have the right sun and the right wavelengths and whatnot, you're fine. That's why today they're so very worried about <coughs> 5G cellular service causing major problems with health. Because you don't know what's in 5G. That's an electromagnetic field. They're really worried about it. I mean, they're not because it means big business, but they're worried about it. And that's why you see a lot of arguments coming up about putting them on school buildings, you know, putting the towers in school buildings or sensitive areas, because that's a concentration of that energy wavelength that we aren't you know, we get bombarded by cell phones all day, and that's not too good. Okay, any questions to this point? So now we know serotonin is important, melatonin is important, vitamin D is important. Um, and Dr. Ott has, and he was actually, and I dug these out of the basement, and I, I suddenly remembered um, Dr. Ott also uh, made the first pair of full spectrum polarized sunglasses. And these little puppies have gotta be 30 years old. 
And you don't, it, there's nothing really special about them. I mean, they just look like a pair of sunglasses, right? Mm -hmm. But they're full spectrum. So what happens is when you're, when you're walking around with these on, you're getting the full range of the colors and the lights through these glasses. And just, just to, I don't want to be leaguer too long, we only have till 2 o'clock, but color and healing and feeling well, and, and if anybody wants to look at this particular book, this is a book by Darius Dinsha, and Mr. Dinsha, this is Mr. Dinsha way back when, okay, and this was, this book was, came out in 1920. And what Mr. Dinshaw did was is he took color therapy and color healing to the next level. And if anybody wants to look at this book, you can. But each wavelength of color has a, a healing proper, property to it. What he did was is he took films, just pieces of film with the colors of all, I mean, every color has a, a specific number. You can just look in this book about all the numbers that he, and the variations and the combinations that he would use, and he would use a light source, and he would use these films targeting the part of the body that he was working on for healing, and he would heal with the light and the color associated with what was going on. It's how effective this is, and he was one of the originators of this particular, it's called spectrochrome in, in diagnosed disorders. And if you just look at it, at it, I mean, they use, every, every color had a number. Every variation of green had numbers. Every variation of blue had numbers. And he mixed and matched them and studied them and he healed people with that. With, and it's just with light frequency, it's a wavelength. And if you were in the photography industry, those films, the filters, they would put them over the light and then shine the light on. It would make you look a different color but if you want to know what the colors are, you get the Panatone book. If you're interested in printing and stuff, each variation of green has a specific, a specific number and they can dial it in on, a, on what, how, they, how they print and everything. So there's a big thick book on all the colors and all the quality of light. That's the, what she's talking about. It's not just the quantity, it's also the quality. And we're so far from uh, the equator that we're tilted. So the light goes through the atmosphere a lot more than if you're at the equator. So the quality of light that we get is not necessary, not necessarily the same. So if you move to South Jersey, you might not get the quality of light that, uh, that you require. So it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of scientific stuff that goes on in the books and stuff, but it comes down very, very simple. Just, you know, get the light you need. Um, yeah, we were talking about, did you have a question, Joy? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we had mentioned earlier that uh, the doctors would prescribe you to go take a two-week vacation down south. Um, and over the years, if you if you haven't noticed it, you probably will as soon as I bring this to your attention. But over the years, people began participating in more events happening between October and January that include colorful decorations, lots of colorful lights, and lots of social interaction. What's the biggest, heaviest decorated holiday that we have now. Anybody know? Christmas. Christmas. Not Christmas anymore. <laughs> Halloween. It's Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween. It's <laughs> and when you when you stop <laughs> to think about it, Halloween <laughs> comes in October and when does seasonal affective start taking a heavy hold on you? So you've got Halloween, Thanksgiving is not so much decorations and whatnot, okay? And then you have Christmas. You have uh, if Hanukkah comes along, you've got your festival of lights with Hanukkah. Uh, and you've also got um, Festival of Light. There are other Festival of Lights that run into January in, in, in certain parts of the country or in the world. Now, because we're not the only ones that have this problem. It's all, all over the world. So there are many festivals and gatherings and joyous occasions that people do, especially through like January, because <laughs> they're trying to overcome getting into deep, too deep of a, a sad situation. 
okay? And um, that's why it all happens. That's why Christmas is su was such a big holiday because in December, by that time, the bears are all hibernating. Why aren't we? In the meantime, we're all out here, you know, joyous, trying to be joyous and decorating and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, when you stop to think about it, I mean, we naturally do things to try and alleviate the symptoms of sad, and maybe we don't recognize that that's what we're doing, but that's what we're doing, okay? Now, Dr. Ott had not, not now Dr. Ott was the, the beginner of all of this stuff, but he's not the only one, but I, I kind of pick on him because he was my person that I learned from. He has lots of, uh, of lights, and if you have to go online because they're, just to show you pictures of them is, is doesn't doesn't do them justice. But he's got all kind. Oh, and you can these art lights are for used um, for crafters, painters, anybody who needs a natural light. If you start reading your books with a full spectrum light as your reading lamp, you're going to find that your eye, eyes are less tired. Uh, you're you're seeing better. You're feeling better. And, but you can get all kinds of, I, I'll leave these here if you want to look at them, but you can go online to Dr. Ott or you can look up anybody and they have a variety of Ott lights um, available. They also have light, what they call light boxes. You can ha hang a light box on the wall wherever you need it. There are many ways to get, to get your sunlight. Um, I'm just going to quickly tell you that I had two customers in Pine Bush over the years when we got into the full spectrum lighting. Uh, it was the dentist office down in the strip mall um, and um, my other customer was uh, Mr. Napolitano was into, um, he was a massage therapist and he was into other things. Both of them had offices with no, not very many windows. And I got talking to the dentist one day because it, once you go past the front window and you're back into the offices, there's no there's no light there's no light in there except the fluorescent overhead lights. And we had gotten to the conversation, and I said, oh, "I'll tell you what you can do." I said, "Fluorescent lights are the worst lights there are anyway. Get rid of them." I said, "Go out and buy yourself the the replacement full spectrum lights and put them in your all your rooms in there." So he did. Next time I went to see him, he said. What a difference! What a big difference! Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Mr. Napolitano had the same problem. He had a bunch of small rooms in the house he was working out of, and everybody was clustered around in their desks and whatnot, and there was nothing but just the regular lights in there. And I said, Ralph, put some full-spectrum lighting in these rooms, please. You're, you're mistreating your people. So he did. He changed all the lights in the whole place. He says, I've never seen happier employees in my life. He says, I can't believe it. I'm fighting to come in the door. It's he just they couldn't get over both of those occasions. A simple thing of changing a, a, a light bulb, and I was laughing because Bill and I went to Walmart. Yeah, we were in Walmart. We were looking to see if they had the bulbs that we were looking for because I, I didn't want to come and tell you. Well, just go over to Walmart, Walmart and get them. We couldn't find what we were looking for. However, I did find a bulb that said, "Wake up, wind down, sleep." I said, well, that's that's a sleep lamp. The next best thing you can do when you want to sleep with full spectrum lighting or wake up to it is, uh, uh, ever, ever heard of a sunrise lamp? And the day, how many of you have to get up before the sun gets up? Yeah. And you don't want to do that, do you? No. Okay, well, what a sun lamp does, it comes on, you set it to come on at a certain hour and it starts out at a low, low light and it gradually gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And what that does is it tells your body, oh, the sun's coming up. It's time for me to wake up. Melatonin, go away. I don't need you anymore. And the sunlight lamp, sunrise lamp, helps you to wake up in the morning. Which So it's an excellent thing to use in conjunction with full spectrum lighting. I found spotted them in the stores I think even at Ollie's the other day, we were in Ollie's, and I said, oh, look at this, a sunrise lamp. I, battery operated or plug into the wall, whatever. But you but can there get are, the bulb and then use you your smartphone. Get the bulb and use your smartphone, and wherever you put it, it will, whatever time you say, it will slowly increase. It'll, it'll simulate. But you can get LED full-spectrum lamps now. Yep. Um, let me just, uh, so the, the lamp, I have art lights Every, everywhere in my house. I work at my computer with an art light on. I have uh, a art light on the uh, 
Uh, do I have one here? Do I have one here on your desk? Oh, did we put a full bulb in your lamp? Oh, I think we, 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 we changed some of the bulbs and the lamps to full spectrum, especially places where we sit a lot. Then we've changed it over to a full spectrum lighter. And it makes a whole lot, not only are you seeing colors truer, but it's easier on your eyes. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't take that much energy to, to read with the full spectrum lighting. But there are all kinds of models, floor models, uh, desk models. He even has models, uh, has uh, uh, models out sanitized. I'm not kidding you, sanitizing. All kinds of different kind of uh, uh, things and they, and they sanitize while they're sitting on your desk. Technology is wonderful today if you, if you like it. Now, a couple of things that I just wanted to cover with you. And it was funny because Joyce mentioned something about spending some time out in the woods in forests and woods and, and we were talking about wintering uh, when you guys came in and nature can lift your mood and in the it, this was an article that was written when we were still in COVID a little bit but um, this this study was of nearly 20,000 people in the United Kingdom now the United Kingdom is another dreary place isn't it folks <laughs> yeah. really bad Okay, they what found they, they found what seems to be a sweet spot is two hours per week or slightly more in a natural setting had the biggest <coughs> impact on improving overall well-being and health. Now we, we say, I, I always tell everybody, get out in the sunlight between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. when the sun is at its highest peak. They say 20 minutes to half an hour is good. But this study came up and said two hours per week or slightly more in a natural setting had the biggest impact on improving overall wealth, health, well-being and health. Less than two hours didn't produce nearly the same gains and much more time outdoors didn't produce significantly more benefit. It didn't matter whether time was spent outdoors in one two-hour outing or divided into multiple smaller ones. Nature had a therapeutic effect on all types of people, including those who are healthy and those who, with health conditions much better than sitting in on your couch. While that's true, nature offers some added perks. In Japan, there's a practice called forest bathing. The Japanese term <clears throat> Shinrin-yoku means taking in the forest atmosphere. People go into a forest and view it while walking, sitting, or a combination of the two. One Japanese study compared the effects of people walking and sitting in 24 different forests and outdoors in nearby city neighborhoods. In each type of setting, participants sat and viewed the landscape for about 14 minutes and then walked for about 16 minutes. Researchers measured various markers of stress, including levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, pulse rate, and blood pressure before and after sitting and walking in both types of environments. Being in a forest has significantly more therapeutic than being in a city environment but I highly recommend that you regularly go outdoors into the most natural setting available to you. So whether that's a forest or a city park or whatever you've got available to you. And this, um, this is Dr. Marlene and she says, I, she tells her patients to aim for a little dose of nature every day if possible and perhaps take a longer jaunt in pleasant natural surroundings once a week or so. And rem remember, it's all about taking in your natural surroundings. Meaning, along with the sunlight, which is good for you to be out there, being out in the woods, hug a tree, folks. I'm sorry. People laugh at us tree huggers. Laugh all you want. But I'm probably a lot more grounded than you'll ever be. Believe me. Go hug a tree. Okay? It does wonders. The other thing I wanted to just point out is, and I know, I, I, but I can, I'm cranky, I'm 74, I've been around, and I can say things like that and get away with it. Can I? No. Yes. Oh, okay. No. All right. All right. The other thing I wanted, wanted to be uh, to tell you about is how, how many people have talk, heard about the uh, benefits of turmeric? Um, there's a lot, some people don't like to take supplements or whatever the case might be, but St. John's wort is an excellent supplement for mood. I feed it to him all the time. <laughs> um, but turmeric has anybody heard of turmeric yes. this is turmeric is just so great on so many different things diabetes prevention pain relief reduced chronic inflammation better memory and mood and improved overall health so he throws turmeric in when he does a lot of the cooking so he throws this into everything 
okay it's just a good overall um, herb and it's been used in Asia for thousands of years so it's not it, 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 not going anywhere we know it's good we know it's safe so try to throw, throw that it's um, and the main ingredient in that is um, curcumin 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 thank you yeah, so I'm no good at pronunciations. I can't. I can't remember. I have to call and renew his prescriptions every ninety days. <laughs> I have to click the bottle there, and I go to the. And when she, when I call, she starts laughing as soon as she hears my voice. Uh, Emodipine, and I I have to sit there and and spell out. I can't pronounce these words, and I get a kick out of her because she's a little Spanish gal, speaks Spanish like. And she knows all these pronunciations better than I do. Okay. All right. So, um, anybody have any questions at this point? We're more or less at the top. Yeah, end of what question. about sitting in, in front of a sunny window? Oh. It takes place, you know, you can't go out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, thank you for bringing that up because that was in my notes. Um, another suggestion that we give people is if you have a window facing east in the morning when you sit to read your newspaper and have your cup of coffee, sit there every morning. Read your newspaper, drink your coffee, and let the sun come in that window and into your eyes. I we have we live in a, a hexagon shaped house, walls of glass. It's wonderful. Yeah, it sounds great. And this time of the year, I love the house because it's passive solar. So the bedroom wing of the house, when the sun comes out at that nice lower angle, the house is designed to use that sun and warms up the bedroom wing. So, especially now, because I'm winding down on my physical therapy for my shoulder and I'm doing more stuff at home, I wait until that sun gets, that's at the right angle, it takes me about an hour to get through my exercises, and I go into the bedroom, and now I've got a whole room, glass wall, in front of the sun, and I'm doing my exercises, make sure my eyes are nice and open, and I take off as many items of clothing that I can while I'm inside, do my exercises and I get my sun exposure for an hour. Works great, love it. But in East, the morning sun always is, if you talk to even the farmers, they'll tell you rising sun in the morning is much more beneficial than the setting sun at the evening. So pick an East window, drink your coffee and, and read your newspaper. Best thing for you. Anybody have any questions at this point? We're at the end of our time. You're more than welcome to look at the books. Um, I'll answer any questions that you might have. There's a question yeah. in the back. Question. <gasps> yes. <laughs> the uh, gentleman that was healing with the light. Yes. Why aren't doctors today using that theory? Uh, it's the same reason pharmaceutical companies want customers and not cures. I see. There, okay. there are some chiropractors that are involved in the color therapy and, and things that go on uh, yeah. with that. And the new modern chiropractors, uh, they're not bone crackers bone and stuff. Oh. So what they do is they work on supplements, they work on all this other stuff, and some of them actually have um, other health practitioners in their office. They rent out office space where they come in. I have a couple friends that work in actually work in chiropractors offices to supplement what the chiropractor does. So it's a it is a kind of a a, a new age thing that uh, it, it's not well known because it's a just you have to know the it get within your society. I have one uh, question: How many people here have heard the term indigo children? Okay, remember what she said about the indigo. Indigo was this people cannot recognize the color indigo. So what happens is these children are suddenly able to see indigo and into ultraviolet. Their eyesight, at, their eye awareness is different than uh, you know before they're changing. So I don't know what's causing it, but that's one of the things that in the UFO group that uh, we, we talked about was the changing in uh, <coughs> awareness of uh, you know some people and you can work on recognizing that and uh, you know uh, enhancing your chakras enhancing your sight and for anybody's uh, uh, information is it Michael's that's still there 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Michael's. Yes. Michael's. Yeah. Michael's. All right, Michael's and Joanne Fabrics. Joanne Fabrics is in the corner in the mall in the middle mm-hmm. town. They have. Joanne has more, but she has a nice selection of art lights. If you want to go down and take a look at art lights in person. For the quilters. For yeah. the quilters, yes, yeah. exactly. Anybody who works with the, yeah. And, and they have them with magnifying glasses. They, they have all kinds of art lights. So yep. you, you can find something that would please your needs. Um, but Joanne's is a good place. Uh, Michael's had some. I don't know if they always have them, but uh, I would suggest go to Joanne's. Uh, and then if you, at least that'll give you an idea of what you can get. But if you go online, you can find tons of. Is that O T T? Yes. O T T. Yes. John Ott. John Ott. I have a few copies of a little bio on him. He he did a. This is from 1950s. He did a show in Chicago on how to grow your vegetables. He was just you know I I, I laughed because uh, he was a banker by trade. He got into this photography uh, stuff and came up with all this fantastic information in his books that he has out there and he and he had no formal training in any of this stuff this was all by his experimentation and his desire to learn and to try and figure things out for Disney that he came up with all this wonderful stuff and um, I, I like him that's why I like him <laughs> So, uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, you're free to, to peruse these, I, a little bit of I these books. I just want to mention, uh, three nights ago on the news, some of you might have seen it, the oldest woman in the world passed away. Did you see yeah. that? 118, 118 years, years old. old. Yes. Yeah. And they said, what was the secret to your success? Yeah. Mental yeah. Uh, yeah, alertness yeah. and all. And I'm passing this along because I believe in it. She said dark chocolate and red wine. Yes. yes. I, I, he read that to me. I read it to her. Oh, he read that. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. He read that to me this morning, and I said, uh, he, so he said to me, he said, what, what kind of wine? I said, probably red. That's yeah, the best. Red wine and dark chocolate. You know? Red wine and dark chocolate. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, that's all I have to share with you today, folks. Uh, did I answer some helpful, yes. Yes. Thank you some helpful information? Oh, thank yes. You. And mood lifting. Thank you very much. You're always very informative. Yeah. I just want to just want to mention next month is going to be on psychic abilities. That's going to be his job mm-hmm. next month, and it's just going to be a fun type thing. How to how to heighten your psychic <coughs> abilities? Things you can do. You know, work on some projects and. What day is that? That is on. Um, uh, February 16th.